Welcome to my world. Another day, another time, another period for knowledge acquisition. Knowledge is power, health is well. Today's topic has to do with different strokes for different folks. Yeah, it is uh, a science of you find SCD, that is sickle cell disease, in Africans. And this, you do not wonder why it is geographically located with Africans and those in the tropical areas, whereas those in temperate areas are free, the whites and co. But there is also another disease called phenyketonuria, PKU, which is also not found mainly, I mean, in Africa, but more uh, amongst the whites in those areas that are not uh, uh, tropical uh, regions. So the geographical locations of all these uh, diseases now brought the idea that you have different strokes for different folks. But you cannot understand the in-depth knowledge of all this without following me on this live section. I shall also explore the relationship between albinism and uh, vitiligo, which are uh, just uh, as an extension of these different strokes for different folks. If you like my presentation, please press the like button, subscribe, and keep on keeping on with my videos. The slide section comes immediately. Objective. To examine some diseases like phenicaldunuria and uh, sickle cell disease and compare and contrast them for clearer or deeper understanding of their differences. The Introduction. Autosomal recessive disorder could be classified as inborn error of metabolism, especially when you are examining the sickle cell disease and phenicatonuria. Phenicatonuria, or PKU, and sickle cell disease, SCD, are serious problems that could be avoided by counseling women or future mothers. Men are not exempted anyway, but especially future mothers to do their genotype before marriage in order to avoid experiencing babies or children that may come down since it is a problem that may come down with this disease. This, this is a problem that is manifested when carriers of these diseases marry fellow carriers. Yes, let's look at the explanation here. Autosomal recessive inheritance is exactly the same word, autosomal recessive disorder. You can see the two parents, the male and the female, mom and dad. Uh, the mom is a carrier, the dad is a carrier. That carrier sign shows the red stain on their gene. The gene is on the chromosome. And when they now meet and uh, give birth, out of four children, but the possibility is one of their children will be normal, having no nothing that will be passed on genetically to any of the children. But two out of their four children, that is, half will be having the carrier status, whereas one will have both, that is, the two recessive genes. That's why it's called autosomal recessive gene. It is passed on to that one, and that one will suffer it. That is very the same thing. It's just the same thing with both PKU and XCD. Yes, let's talk about the dangers of uh, carriers marrying carriers. It is very popular with uh, SCD that you talk about sickler, but uh, the situation of PKU, look at the brain, the head of that child becomes smaller, that is microcephalic, whereas the normal child will have that normal head size. The Brain is very important. You can imagine the kind of brain such a child uh, will be. So the PKU affects the brain. It's a problem that really affects the brain because the, the PKU does not have the ability to use phenylalanine, which is very necessary as a protein uh, formation for certain uh, aspect of the brain that it has to use. On the other hand, the mother especially would have to be taking the sickle cell disease child 
to uh, the hospitals, meeting the clinician almost uh, regularly uh, to, uh, if they charge us to leave long because there are so many complications that will arise, especially from pains. Pains at the joint. We know the blood cells. The explanation is very clear. The red blood cells is sickle. Immediately there is a low oxygenation. Immediately there is a crisis or the child is stressed. So that no, uh, their sickle shape really clog the flow of the blood and affects the growth of the child and affects so many faculties of the child. So that child grows up uh, with that kind of pain. And uh, some these days, because of uh, intervention, medical intervention, uh, live to be 60 years and probably above, but it's not a very common, uh, uh, is it, but can be, could have been prevented by serious counseling. Now let's go into comparison. Phenicaturia, PKU, and XCD. People with PKU can't break down the amino acid, phenylalanine, which then build up in the blood and brain. This can lead to brain damages. It can. It is an inborn error of metabolism. Women with PKU must restrict their PKU level during pregnancy to avoid birth defects and intellectual disability in their infants. Just like I have shown you the microcephaly. Untreated PKU during pregnancy can result in maternal PKU syndrome, which can variably cause congenital heart defects, brain malfunction, microcephaly, and intellectual imp impairment. In the U.S., PKU is most common in whites. So worldwide, it is most common in white and Asians. Yeah, let us understand the symptoms more. Often, the PKU uh, baby have lighter skin, like albinos, ear and eyes, than brothers or sisters without the disease. Other symptoms include eczema, recurrent vomiting, jerking movement in the arms and leg, that's, uh, that has to do with the brain, tremor, mood disorder, and microcephaly. Comparison 2. The risk factor. Let's consider the risk factors. Parents with defective PKU gene are usually of the ethnic uh, extraction, ethnic group, uh, uh, where you want to say whites, less common in African and African America. Whereas the XCD defective gene is a problem of the Africans, uh, African American some Asian, Hispanic, American, and uh, uh, you don't find it in whites. Comparison number three, you will now take up the, let us talk about the causes. Uh, PKU, also known as uh, autosomal recessive disorder, the defect is in the PAH gene, which help creates phenylalanine hydro Silase, the enzyme responsible for breaking down phenylalanine. Both parents must pass the defective version of the PAH gene for their child to inherit the disorder. If one parent passes on an other gene, the child won't have the symptoms but will be a carrier. That I had explained with all the previous pictures. The same thing goes for sickle cell disease, also autosomal. Recessive disorder, mutation is in the hemoglobin beta found on chromosome 11, where the, uh, uh, the cyst amino acid in the 147 amino acid chain uh, is replaced by valine, that is glutamine acid, replaced by valine. It's a single base mutation where you now have uh, the person having excess as his genotype. And the SS uh, genotype, I mean hemoglobin, is poorly soluble when disoxygenated. So you find uh, the crisis during the uh, disoxygenation period or when the patient is stressed. And this is a part of uh, distinguishing factors. This shows clearly the agony and distress on the face of a sickle cell disease mother uh, over. A child. Now let's look at the 
relationship between PKU and albinism. Dietary protein generally will contain the 20 amino acids that form the protein and the, among them is the phenylalanine, very essential, and tyroxine. The phenylalanine will be acted upon by phenylalanine hydrolase to produce tyroxine. This breakdown was done by that hydrolase to tyroxine and the tyroxine is acted on to produce melanin. Melanin is that which makes our skin dark and the, uh, other things and albinos don't have this melanin because they don't have the tyroxinase and you can now see the relationship that if they, at times they want to treat albinism with uh, uh, phenylalanine and that is another discussion that follows. Yes, people use phenylalanine for a disorder that causes white patches to develop on the skin, vitiligo. It has been found that taking her phenylalanine by mouth or applying it to the skin, both in combination with UVA light, seems to improve symptoms of vitiligo. Conclusion Finally, by way of conclusion, autosomal recessive inheritance could be prevented if people are ready to match their genotypes before marriage in the medical laboratories. I mentioned I'm specific about it and accept the recommendations that comes out of it in order to prevent the consequences of this autosomal disorder manifestation in their offsprings. Finally, also, uh, well, the my video conclusion finally by way of conclusion autosomal recessive inheritance could be prevented if people are ready to match their genotypes before marriage in the medical laboratory specific and accept the recommendations that comes out of it in order to prevent the consequences of this autosomal disorder manifestation in their offspring also, you can check more videos, if, especially if you like this uh, video. I have so many on health matters that the laboratory can help unravel and how you can monitor your health. Health is wealth and knowledge is power.